Hyperinflation. Can it happen in the US? What is hyperinflation? Forget about that, what is inflation? The increase in prices for products and services is known as inflation. In other words, if a loaf of bread costs $1 last year, but $1.10 this year, we see an increase of 10 cents. That's 10 cents on a dollar, and in percentage terms, it'll be 10%. This increase in the price over a specific period, usually for a year, expressed as a percentage, is known as inflation. Hyperinflation is where the inflation goes out of hand, like, 1000%, 10,000%, or even a trillion percent over a year. As much as it sounds incredible, it has happened many times in modern history, in the last 100 years. The famous among them are in Germany, immediately after World War I, Hungary, after World War II, Zimbabwe, starting 2007, Venezuela, after 2014, Yugoslavia, in the early 1990s, China, during 1947-49 period, etc. The worst of all these cases was Hungary, where the inflation went so high, the prices kept doubling every 15 hours, and the annual inflation crossed 41 quadrillion percentage points. When hyperinflation occurs, the economy gets destroyed, and people lose their ability to buy essential goods and services. Some economic pundits have warned, such a scenario is likely to happen in the US, with the fiscal and monetary policy that's being followed by the US government, and the central bank. We explore here, if such a scenario is wild imagination, or a real possibility. We'll start with the economic crisis of 2008. In 2008, the American economy was in serious trouble, due to a housing crisis. The US government and the Federal Reserve, the central bank of the United States, responded to the crisis, by printing a lot of money, through a process called QE, or quantitative easing. Though the established economists welcomed this idea, to take care of the crisis that has unfolded, some other economic pundits, raised a concern about the possibility of America experiencing a high level of inflation, or even hyperinflation. The question is, why did the pundits feel anxious about printing money, back then? Were they doomsday predictors, false alarmists, or if there was some merit in their fear? In fact, since 2002, some of these economists have been warning about high inflation, and the printing of money only have been getting higher and higher every year, since then. But, before we answer that, why did the housing crisis lead to a situation, where the Federal Reserve had to print in billions and trillions? The housing crisis created a huge loss, for the Wall Street firms, banks and financial institutions, along with the insurance firms, which insured the financial assets, and other businesses which were part of the economic ecosystem. Many of them were in serious trouble and some of them were getting ready to declare bankruptcy. The subsequent panic resulted in a situation, where banks were refusing to lend to many businesses, unless they were certain, that these businesses will not cause them further losses. Of course, without the free access to lending by the banks, businesses cannot run. This is where the Federal Reserve stepped in first. They printed the money, and allowed the local banks to borrow from them, at such low interest rates, and provided cover, if the businesses fail to repay it to the banks. In the end, the Federal Reserve, and the US government had to not only bail out the banks, for their past irresponsible behavior, which led to the housing crisis, but also provide subsequent cash infusion, to the banks, to cover their future lending. When we discuss about the Federal Reserve printing money, we are not talking about physical notes being printed. In the digital world, the Federal Reserve just increases the availability of funds, in its accounting, creating an equivalence to printing money. This process called quantitative easing, or QE, which helps the Federal Reserve provide enough liquidity, to all the banks, governmental agencies, and other financial institutions. Everything does look great. Or does it? No, not really. There is definitely a downside to this. 
the excess money that is now in the system, creates a serious problem. When the money present in the system increases, the value of this money, say, the dollar, decreases. Let's explain it this way. The money that's in circulation is used for purchasing goods and services. The price of these goods and services are based on the demand and the quantum of money available to purchase them. If the products and services stay at the same level, but the availability of money increases, then the price of these goods and services will increase. And we know, that's what is called inflation. However, in the subsequent years after 2008, the gloom and doom of hyperinflation never happened. As a matter of fact, there was hardly any noticeable increase in inflation at all. The economists who predicted a high inflation scenario looked like alarmists, and were not sufficiently qualified to predict the inflationary conditions. This led to a new theory that printing money by some governments, especially the United States, has no adverse effects, including inflation. This theory is called Modern Monetary Theory, or MMT. The Modern Monetary Theory suggests that the government could simply create more money, without consequence, as it's the issuer of the currency. In other words, money can now come out of thin air, with no negative consequences. All your problems can be solved. What a grand idea! Since the reality on the ground seemed to match this idea, the next time money had to be printed, there was far less anxiety to print more and more money, all around the world. We are focusing here on the fiscal and monetary policy of the United States. Though this analysis has been true, for many advanced economies, including Europe, UK, Australia, China, Japan, etc. We'll continue this discussion using data, from the United States. When Obama became the president in 2009, the modern monetary theory of printing money, with no ill effects was gaining wider acceptance, either through conviction, or for convenience. So, Obama and his financial advisors became comfortable, with the idea of printing money, whenever needed. During Obama's eight years of presidency, he made the national debt rise from $10 trillion to $20 trillion. This debt was financed by issuing treasury bonds, and a lot of these bonds were purchased, using the quantitative easing process. Despite all of this additional money seemingly injected into the system, there was no inflation. So, there were more and more economists, financial gurus, suggesting that printing more money will not cause inflation, forget about hyperinflation. When Trump took over the presidency in January 2017, printing money had become a norm. Trump or his advisors didn't seem to have any worries about it either. And then the dreaded pandemic crippled the US economy, starting March 2020. When the pandemic hit on March 2020, and subsequent lockdowns were imposed, the US economy came to a complete grind. There were several areas of the economy, including hospitality and retail sectors, that suffered the most. There were many employers who were put in a position to let their employees go. The US government decided to stop this trend, by giving many incentives, and loan programs, to the small and medium businesses, to prevent them from firing their workforce, which would have resulted in a huge unemployment problem, within the country. So, in the period between March 2020, to March 2022, a two-year period, the US quantitative easing, or QE, was around $5 trillion. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet was around $4 trillion in March 2020, and it reached nearly $9 trillion by March 2022. So, it more than doubled during the two-year period. Despite the very high level of printing of money through QE, US hasn't experienced hyperinflation yet. Yes, the inflation for the past 12 months, as of March 2022, has been very high, but the Consumer Price Index, CPI, a direct measure of inflation that affects the average consumer, has not reached double digits on an annual basis, yet. This begs a simple question. Why didn't the excessive money printing by the Federal Reserve result in hyperinflation? 
There are some obvious reasons why the inflation or hyperinflation hasn't happened, despite the increased money supply. A large portion of the US money supply end up leaving the country. As we all know, US dollar is the reserve currency, and hence nations hoard the US dollars, as part of the foreign exchange reserve, through US bonds or other assets. But, there is an even bigger reason for the US money supply leaving the country. This is due to the high level of US imports, over and above the exports, known as the trade deficit. The US is actually shipping the money to China, or other countries, by importing the finished goods from these countries. So, what are the consequences of such imports? As we said before, the direct consequences, money supply within US gets reduced. Second, the employment numbers don't go up, since the labor-intensive industries have moved to China, resulting in a less possibility of increased wages for mid-level jobs. The specialized, high-skilled jobs that stay within the US don't employ the same large number of people. On the services sector, it has shown constant increase in productivity, thereby keeping a lid on the wages of the service sector employees. Third, the products and services imported from the low-cost countries, obviously cost less, preventing an inflation. Fourth, the pandemic has created a constant fear factor among US employees, about losing their jobs, causing a reduction in free flow of money. This fear factor made people saving money, or investing on the stock market. Remember, the interest rates for savings or deposits on banks, has been held so low, people had to invest in the stock market, and even on cryptocurrencies. The idea of saving and investing, reduced the spending. If the spending accelerates, then money travels faster from source to source, which economists call as a higher velocity of money supply. But the velocity has been kept under check, for a few years now, due to various factors. One other factor that also keeps the inflation in check, is the fact, the money supply that has reached the banks, from the Federal Reserve, does not get fully distributed to businesses and consumers, as loans. Well, does it mean that printing of money has no bearing on inflation? Is the modern monetary theory real then? We don't believe so. Currently, the money supply of US has reached a level, above and beyond what is being shipped outside of the USA. This is bound to increase the money supply within the country. On top of that, there is always a possibility that US dollar loses its sheen, and countries look for other assets in their reserve. The geopolitical situation and trade wars between US and China may lead to lower level of imports, and reduced trade deficit, resulting in increased money supply within the US. So, we absolutely don't think that the modern monetary theory is valid, and the risks of high inflation or even hyperinflation cannot be ruled out in the United States. Let's hope the next few years reduce, or reverse the trend of uncontrolled increase in money supply. Thanks for watching.